Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, classmates. Good evening. Hi. We are going to wait for the others. Uh, I think a couple of minutes, one or two minutes to um, the others to enter the uh, meeting. And we are going to begin with the, wait, the week number two. So let's wait a little bit for the others. A, a second week so we are going to start with the second week and also we are going to work with um, the section number three of the platform vamos a trabajar con lo que es la sección número tres de la plataforma eh, vamos a ir avanzando verdad y con este trabajo so we are going to begin with the topics that we have there and also we are going to um, work in a different kind of activities because uh, I have a uh, for today um, some activities related to the topic that we are going to develop in this session Remember that we are working on the a Google Doc in which we have all the information of the past um, days. Uh, we have the information for the topics that we were developing the last week. So we are going to make a short review of the topics that we were developing um, in the first week of this course. Then we are going to listen a conversation that we have on the platform. And <clears throat> then we are going to learn something related to, to that topic that it is supposed to um, give us some clues about the use of that information in a real conversation and how to apply th that information on our daily life. <clears throat> So in that case, we are going to see a grammatical topic and also we are going to make some exercises. So in this case, we are going to have like four different steps in this uh, session. And I think uh, and I hope that we have uh, a, enough time to complete all the things that I have for you um, in this uh, session. Tenemos cuatro cosas diferentes que vamos a trabajar en esta sección o en esta sesión. Eh, primero vamos a hacer un pequeño, una pequeña retroalimentación de los temas que estuvimos eh, viendo en la semana pasada. Eh, luego vamos a escuchar una conversación, ¿verdad? Eh, y vamos a identificar más o menos cuál es el tema eh, del que vamos a estar trabajando en esta sesión. Y cuando ya hayamos escuchado la conversación, hayamos analizado un poco eh, la información que se habla en la conversación, vamos a pasar a lo que es el tema en sí. Vamos a desarrollar el tema en, en varias partes. Um, we are going to base the information on the main topic. Then we are going to add more information that is related to the main topic. And then we are going to make a couple of exercises in which we are going to apply the information that we are um, learning today. So we are going to begin with the presentation of the document again. So I'm going to share with you the screen in which we are going to see the document. Thank you. And we're going to just check a little bit the topics that we have here. And then we are going to read the phrase for today. So give me a second. I'm sharing with you the document. Give me a second. Okay, this is the document. 
good evening. Uh, okay, this is the document in which first you can see uh, the list in which you can find all the videos about the classes. Ahí está el link para los que querían accesar a lo que son los videos para poder eh, ver de nuevo los videos. Um, then we have the first and we have the first topic. In this case, uh, we were uh, talking about um, how often do we do an activity. So in this case, we were like talking about the different adverbs of frequency that we have and how to use those adverbs of frequency. So we have some uh, examples of a uh, phrases that you wrote using that information. Then we have a conversation in which we apply that information in a real life conversation. We have here the uh, topic. Yes, I will send the link again to the group after the meeting. Les voy a enviar el enlace después de la reunión. Lo voy a volver a mandar al grupo de WhatsApp para los que accesaron después. <clears throat> so, this is the topic, the advert of frequency, in which we were, like, developing the information that we have about them. Um, we have some questions, some examples. Then we were talking about the intonation of falling address in which we talk about the uh, what it, why it is important to uh, learn how to use the intonation of the words uh, because the meaning is completely different when we are using another uh, intonation. And we have the examples of how to pronounce the word please. So in that case, we were like uh, practicing some a little bit the intonation of the words. Then we have another conversation. Uh, we have questions with how uh, we were like um, developing uh, the use of the question how. Um, we have a simple past questions, how to form a simple past question. And also we have some examples of open close questions and we have different kind of questions. So in this case, um, I add some new questions to the group that we have on the document in which you can see you have different kind of question here. Tenemos más preguntas ahí de las que ya habíamos tratado en la clase anterior para que ustedes vayan viendo más ejemplos de, ese, de esas preguntas. Now, Remember that we were like working on the platform. So that's why we don't have a lot of information uh, on the document because we have the document, we have the topic and we have the uh, work on the platform. But now we are going to add more information because we are going to have um, a grammatical topic. So in that case, we have a lot of um, important information that we need to, to remember about the topic that we are going to develop. So this is the phrase for today. The key to success is to focus on goals, not obstacles. It is important that we can focus on the things that we want to develop in our life. And also you need to remember that in some cases you cannot um, have a really easy path in which you are going to develop all the things that you want for your life but you need to focus just on your goal, not in the obstacles because you are going to feel bad if you find something that is not good for your um, journey. Así que enfocémonos en, nuestro, en, en nuestras metas y no en los obstáculos que van a salir a lo largo de nuestra vida, ya que si nos enfocamos en los obstáculos, no vamos a disfrutar el camino, ¿verdad? El, el, um, Podemos decir que todo, todo el, la jornada que vamos a realizar para alcanzar nuestras metas, sino que vamos a estar siempre amargados, enojados, tristes, ansiosos, deprimidos, porque nos está yendo mal en una cosa y no estamos formándonos, ¿verdad? No estamos viendo que eso al final nos va a hacer más fuertes y más exitosos. So, the key is to, to success is to focus on goals, not obstacles. So we are going to begin with the um, the conversation. 
let's listen the conversation and I think it's going to appear here if I'm not wrong. So this is the video. I am your new neighbor. This is the first conversation of the section number three. So we are going to listen this conversation twice and then we are going to see why it is relevant to the topic that we are going to develop today. Vamos a escuchar la conversación dos veces y luego vamos a eh, vamos a, a hablar por qué es importante para el tema que vamos a desarrollar hoy. So, let's listen to the conversation. Barber shop? Welcome everybody to section eight. What's your neighborhood like? As we always do, we listen to a conversation in order to get ready for our topics, which will include places around town, location, and there is, there are. In this session, you will listen to a conversation between neighbors asking about places in town. Pay attention to there is, there are, one, any, and some. Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? Welcome everybody to section eight. What's your neighborhood like? As we always do, we listen to a conversation in order to get <clears> ready <throat> for our topics, which will include places around town, location, and there is, there are. In this session, you will listen to a conversation between neighbors asking about places in town. Pay attention to there is, there are, one, any, and some. Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh. Yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, <coughs> there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? Yes. Okay, this is the conversation, and it's called um, your new neighborhood. So in this case, we have two uh, people that is having a conversation, and you can see um, they are like someone new on the neighborhood. So we have Jack and Mr. Day. So in this case, Jack is asking or he's like introducing himself. Because he said, excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Yes, they are. there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And... Is there a laundromat near here? And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there is one across from the shopping center. Well, I think there is one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there is a barber shop in the shopping center too. By the way, there is a barber shop in the shopping center too a barber shop and he doesn't understand why she is telling him that it is a barber shop on the shopping center but she is telling him because of the uh, the hair because he has a long hair so what is one of the things that we can focus on in this conversation what do you think it is the topic about de qué creen que trata el tema que vamos a uh, desarrollar hoy It is something maybe about age issues. Mm, it is like a, something grammatical. It's algo de gramática. All right. Mm -hmm. What do you think? 
reading reading the the uh the conversation there are some words that appear a lot of times so what do you think it is about Hay palabras que se repiten bastante en esa conversación. ¿Cuál creen que es la estructura que se repite más ahí? There are any, teacher. Any. Aparece any. What more? There. There. there ah, there no, are. No, there is, there are any, some. So, in this case, See, in this conversation, we can find a lot of um, statements, a lot of phrases, a lot of questions in which we are using there is, there are. So in this case, we are going to um, talk about there is, there are, what are the structures, why we use those uh, phrases. And also, we are going to learn something new about uh, there is and there are. Vamos a hablar del de uso del there is, there are. Vamos a ir viendo también uso del any, some. Vamos a aprender sobre las countable and uncountable nouns. Y luego vamos a hacer un ejercicio. En este caso no es como algo, eh, I think it is not something new. Uh, we are just going to remember information because uh, this is not the first time, I guess, you hear about that topic. So in this case, we are going to remember the information that we know about the use of there is and there are. And also we are going to see um, some quantifiable words or quantity words that we can use to express ideas about objects. Vamos a ver algunas frases, ¿verdad? Que se pueden utilizar también para referirse a objetos contables y no contables. Así que vamos a hacer como, um, no un short review, pero vamos a hacer como un kind of long. Va a ser un poco eh, largo, ¿verdad? La, el... Vamos a hacer como un análisis, un, un, uh, vamos a recordar un poco sobre este tema. Así que nos vamos a pasar al documento eh, y vamos a comenzar a eh, hablar un poco sobre el uso del there is, there are, cuáles son las diferencias, cómo lo vamos a utilizar, positive statements, eh, different rules, um, negative sentences, we are going to see some questions, contractions, um, and that's it. It is not like a very long information, but we are going to have like different parts. Then we are going to see something about the um, uh, countable and uncountable nouns. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de nombres contables, no contables, cómo se usan con any, con some. Y luego vamos a ver nuestro ejercicio relacionado a este tema. So, the thing is that we are going to develop this topic. There is an there are. And we are going to begin with the difference between there is and there are. Ok, vamos a ir viendo la diferencia, ¿verdad? En el uso. <coughs> So, we use there is and there are to say that something exists or doesn't. And we are going to see some uh, constructions in the positive, negative, and question. Así que básicamente, ¿en qué se parece en esto? Antes de hablar de una diferencia exacta, vamos a ver para qué utilizamos el there is y el there are. En este caso, lo utilizamos para decir que algo existe o no existe. So in this case, we say we use there is and there are to say that something exists or doesn't.
That is very simple. And we are going to begin with the positive statements. Positive sentences. Vamos a ver cómo construimos las oraciones positivas. Tenemos la primera regla. Rule number one. And this rule said, you should use there is with singular countable nouns. Vamos a utilizar el there is para nombres singulares contables. Solo para nombres singulares contables. Okay, and we have some examples. I'm going to make this like this because it's going to uh, make it wrong like this. Okay, so in the example, there is one pen, there is one hand on the table. So in this case, the word pen is countable, noun in the singular form. So it requires use, and there is. Aquí tenemos un objeto, un objeto que podemos contar, un objeto que podemos tocar, y es singular. Singular se refiere que solo estamos hablando de él, no le agregamos nada más. En este caso, como estamos diciendo que hay un solo objeto, utilizamos el there is. It could be there is a bottle on the table, there is an apple on the table, there is a cell phone on the table, but countable nouns. Siempre son nombres contables. We cannot say there is water on the table, hay agua en la mesa. No podemos tratarlo con esa estructura porque el agua no la contamos uno por uno, así como lo hacemos con los lápices, con eh, los celulares, sino que tiene una medida totalmente diferente para eh, hablar sobre ello, ¿verdad? Por la cantidad. Then, we are going to see this, the next one. <coughs> What is the rule number two? Rule two. In this one, it says, you should use, uh, there are, with plural countable nouns. Aquí, el there is es para nombres singulares, there are es para nombres eh, plurales. Cuando ya tenemos más de dos objetos, vamos a utilizar el there is. I mean, there are. You should use there are. With plural nouns or with plural countable nouns. And we have the example. There are five, there are five pencils in the box. So in this case, we have like um, reinforcement of the words. Tenemos como eh, re, reforzamos la idea de que ya tenemos varias cosas poniéndole el número. Tenemos cinco y ya sabemos que nuestro nombre lleva S, se trata de plurales. En ese caso, estamos diciendo que son más de un objeto y ahí ya estamos utilizando el there are. Ahora, rule number three. Vamos con la regla número tres. You should use there is with uncountable nouns. Aquí, vamos a volver a utilizar el there is con nombres no contables. Pero en este caso, no estamos hablando de singulares o plurales, sino que simplemente de nombres no contables. And we have the example. 
There is milk. There is milk in the glass. Entonces, podemos utilizar el there is de dos diferentes formas. One is to uh, use this structure with uh, countable nouns, but singular. And also we can use this uh, structure with uncountable nouns. So in that case, when you are using uncountable nouns, you know that you are not going to have plural or singular, because in that case, it is a different way in which we count that nouns. Cuando son nombres no contables, obviamente no tenemos singulares o plurales, porque no se cuentan de la misma manera que los nombres contables. Así que el there is lo vamos a utilizar con nombres singulares y lo vamos a utilizar luego con los nombres no contables en general. Now, we have the negative sentences. En este caso aplicamos la regla número 4, rule 4. And this rule said, to construct a negative statement or a negative sentence to say that something doesn't exist, you should add not after is or are. Let's see the example. There is no, there is no a tiger and the zoo. I mean, not, 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 okay. There are, not 10 books on the shelf. So in this case, when we are going to use the negative uh, statements, it is almost the same with the simple negative statements in which you are going to add the not after is or are. So in this case, it's the same. You are going to use there is, there are, and then you are going to add not to the statement and then your complement. Así que básicamente es como construir una oración negativa simple en la cual ponemos el not después del is o el are para hacer la negativa. It's the same thing here. There is not a tiger in the zoo. No hay un tigre en el zoológico. There are not 10 books on the shelf. No hay 10 libros en, pues, uh, we can say, uh, en la repisa, ¿verdad? So, that is the construction. It's very simple. It's like to create um, negative statements in simple present, I think. Then, we are going to see the rule number five. In this rule number five, it says, you should use there are not any with countable nouns and there is not any with uncountable nouns to indicate that a zero quantity of something exists. Vamos, util, vamos a utilizar there are not any, o sea, la frase completa, there are not any con nombres contables y there is not any, la frase completa, there is not any para nombres no contables para indicar que uh, no hay nada, o sea, que la cantidad es cero de algo que existe. I'm going to, well, then I'm going to mark this one. There are not 
any Let's see the example. There are no any. There are not any people at the party. And then there is not any milk in the fridge. There is not any milk on the fridge. Okay, aquí tenemos nuestras eh, dos diferencias, ¿verdad? Cuando hay cero de un objeto, vamos a utilizar there are not any. Pero este es para el caso de los nombres contables. I'm going to mark this one. But give me a second. In yellow. And we have here with countable nouns. And then there is not any. And I'm going to mark in green. With uncountable nouns. To what? To indicate that there are or there is a zero quantity of something exists. So we have the two examples. There are not any people at the party. No hay ninguna persona, ¿verdad? En la fiesta. And then there is not any milk on the fridge. No hay, ¿verdad? Nada de leche en el refrigerador. Así que en ese caso, cuando queramos decir que no hay nada de algo, ya sabemos que el there are es para los nombres contables y el there is es para los nombres no contables. And then we have uh, some information about the contractions. And then the question, that is the last part. Solo vamos a ver la, la parte de las contractions. Y de las questions, que es la última parte de esta, del there is y el there are. And then we are going to... Um, learn something about the countable and uncountable nouns, and then we are going to see the, the exercises. So for the contractions, So in this case, you can use the contraction in spoken and written informal English. You know that when we are uh, talking in English, we need to be kind of um, formal because we have different ways in which we can uh, talk with people. Um, in this case, when we are like talking with our friends, we can use different kind of um, words and even we can use contractions. But when we are talking uh, with someone that is like a boss or someone new, we're going to sound kind of formal. But in this case, if you're not going to use the contractions for a formal uh, document. Las contracciones o las formas cortas de las palabras eh, no las vamos a utilizar en documentos formales. Eh, lo podemos utilizar en mensajería, ¿verdad? Mandar un mensaje por WhatsApp, por Messenger, eh, por Instagram, un mensaje a un amigo, una amiga, algún familiar muy cercano. Pero si se trata de eh, nuestro jefe, alguien que apenas conocemos, eh, es un documento formal, we are not going to use the contraction, no vamos a utilizar las contracciones de ningún tipo. 
no vamos a poner am, la i apóstrofe m para decir yo soy o yo estoy o yo tengo. Porque entonces ya no es un documento formal. Ya estaríamos faltando nosotros a eh, la estructura de un documento formal. Así que las contracciones básicamente son para que nosotros hablemos con gente que ya conocemos o la que, la que tenemos confianza, igual que eh, para mensajería. Pero para documentos formales no podemos utilizar contracciones de ningún tipo. Así que ahí sí tenemos que tenerlo claro, ¿verdad? Para eh, lenguaje formal, there is no contraction. So you need to roll the, the whole thing. So we're going to see some uh, examples of how to contract uh, these uh, phrases. We have the, there is, there is not, there are, and there are not. So we're going to see how to use them. There is, there is not, there are, there are not, So in the case of there is, we can use it like this, there's, there's, like this. Then in this case, we can use two different uh, forms. There's not, there's not, or we can use there isn't. In el caso de there are, we are not uh, going to have a contraction. So in this case, we cannot do it. No podemos hacer una contracción o no podemos hacer una forma corta del there are. Así que en ese caso sí se tiene que escribir completo. Ahora, en negativo sí, porque vamos a, a, a unir el are with el not. There are not. Or in this case, there aren't. Now, with the questions, we have some questions on the conversation using is there, are there, or something like that. So we are going to say the rule for the questions. And in this case, it says to construct a question, you shall place is or are in front of there. Es lo mismo que pasa con las preguntas normales. Más que todo cuando utilizamos el verbo to be. Vamos a poner el is o el are para iniciar nuestra pregunta. Y luego vamos a escribir el there. Is there are there. Es la misma, la misma parte, solo que aquí usamos eh, elementos diferentes. So, let's see some examples. And we have here, is there a pen on the table? And also, are there any pencils in the box? So it's the same. You're going to use the same sentence. So you just need to change the order. Es la misma oración de las que tenemos ya hechas que podemos construir o podemos transformar en una pregunta simplemente cambiando el orden donde se encuentra el verbo to be. Now, we are going to see something related to the um, 
countable and uncountable nouns. Vamos a ver un, un, algo un poco rápido sobre los nombres contables y no contables, ya que en este caso eh, estuvimos hablando mucho sobre los countable and uncountable nouns. Solo vamos a hacer unas pequeñas menciones de algunas cosas que necesitamos saber sobre ellos y luego pasamos a la actividad. So, in this case, the count and countable nouns vary from language to language. In some languages, there are no count nouns. Uh, in this case, in Japanese, we don't have that, uh, that situation with the nouns. Esto de los nombres contables y no contables eh, puede variar mucho, ¿verdad? Dependiendo del idioma del que estemos hablando, ya que, por ejemplo, en japonés no hay esa división, ¿verdad? No existe lo de los nombres um, contables y todo eso, ¿verdad? In addition, some nouns that are non-count in English may be countable in other language. Um, en el caso del inglés, hay algunas palabras que funcionan como... Eh, no contables, pero en otros países sí. Por ejemplo, el cabello. En inglés, it is a non-count noun, but in another languages, uh, hair is a countable noun because you can uh, count the, the hair one by one. It is depending on, on the situation. So, what is a, a, a count a noun? ¿Qué es un nombre contable en sí? So, in this case, uh, count nouns can be separated into individual units and count. They usually have both a singular and a plural form. And most of English nouns are count nouns. So, in this case, we can say that we can separate the things and we can count one by one. In this case, I don't know. I don't have anything that I can separate here. Let me see if I can show you something. Mm. Let me see, let me see if I have something. I think I have nothing near my, I don't know, I don't have anything here. I just have paper. <laughs> Solo tengo papel en este caso, but we are going to do it with paper. Vamos a hacerlo con el papel. So in this case, I have this one. This is just one a notebook. You can see like, it is like an agent. Uh, but in this case, I have many um, pieces of papers. I have these ones. And if I separate them, I can count one by one. Si yo separo las hojas de papel de esta estructura en la que están unidas, yo las puedo contar una por una. So in this case, I can count one by one, and I have a different uh, number of uh, piece of papers. Pero en el caso, water, I have water here. I cannot take the water and count one by one because that is something uh, different. En este caso, el nombre contable son unidades que se pueden separar y que pueden ser contadas individualmente. O sea, primero es que lo podemos tocar. Segundo es que lo podemos contar de manera eh, separada. Y muchas, muchas de las palabras que nosotros conocemos en inglés son nombres contables. But I'm just going to uh, write the, the general information about the, the, count, uh, the countable nouns. So, count nouns and the general idea. They are, or they can be, it could be, they can be separate, pueden ser separadas into individuals, into individual units and count. They usually have both a singular and a plural form. Siempre van a tener dos formas, la plural y la singular. Tenemos algunos ejemplos. And I'm going to make it like a list. So give me a second. No, this one not. Uh, this one. So one phone. 
or we can change two phones, one dog, two dogs, then one shirt, two shirts. So we have here the examples. Aquí tenemos ejemplos de nombres contables. One phone, aquí está su forma singular. Two phones, dos celulares, su forma plural. One dog, un perro. Two dogs, dos perros. One shirt, una camiseta o una camisa. Two shirts, dos camisas. However, a few countable nouns only have a plural form in English. Hay algunos nombres contables que de por sí ya vienen en una forma plural. Ya no hay una forma singular para esas palabras. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de esas palabras que ya vienen construidas de esa forma. Vamos a ver cuáles son esos ejemplos. So, in this case, we have clothes. La palabra clothes, la palabra ropa, ¿verdad? No podemos poner simplemente clothes así, porque no estamos hablando de, eh, no, no estaría eh, correcto, ¿verdad? Pants. No es pant, es pants con S. Then, jeans. Aunque se trate de un par de, de vaqueros, ya está construida así la palabra igual que shorts. Porque si solo dejamos short without the S, it means something completely different. And pajamas. Then, we're going to have some information about the non-count nouns. Vamos a terminar con los no contables. Let me see. Give me a second. Shoes. Mm, yes, you can use the word shoes. Because when you separate them, you can say one shoe and two shoes. Yes, it's a, a good example. So in this case, what are the non-count nouns? Um, these uncountable uh, nouns exist as masses or abstract quantities that cannot be counted. Estos eh, existen como masas, ¿verdad? Como masas o eh, cantidades abstractas eh, que no pueden ser contadas. Son como eh, cosas que se unen y al final no podemos separarlas unas por unas. So in this case, it's masses. These nouns exist. Let me see. Rice. Mm -hmm. As masses. Or abstract. It's the same thing with the, with the sugar. Lo mismo con el arroz que con el azúcar, ¿verdad? No se pueden. Podemos decir que sí. Lo vamos a separar por grano. But it is not like something that someone wants to do. No es algo que alguien quiera hacer, estar contando un arrocito, dos arrocitos, tres arrocitos. It is not like that. They have no plural forms, although most English are nouns are count nouns. Not count nouns frequently occur in academic writing. Aquí nos podemos fijar, los nombres no contables aparecen más que todo en la forma escrita. Muchos de los nombres que nosotros vamos a utilizar día a día son eh, nombres contables, pero estos ocurren bastante frecuente en partes escritas, ¿verdad? En documentos. 
Y obviamente ellos no tienen una forma plural, todos son singulares. O incluso no, no podemos decir singular o plural porque son diferentes. And uh, we have different categories. There are categories here. Tenemos categorías de non-con nouns. We are going to see just some examples of these categories. And the first one, we have a mass. Es una masa, ¿verdad? No es una masa de un objeto que podamos tocar, sino que es como algo demasiado grande. En esa masa podemos encontrar palabras como work, el trabajo, ¿verdad? No podemos contarlo uno por uno, todo el esfuerzo que uno hace en, en el trabajo. Eh, the homework. Money, in this case, it is not related to something that we can count by, one by one. Um, then we have the second one that is a natural substance. Una sustancia natural, like air, rice, I mean ice, I'm sorry, ice, water, fire, and a lot of work more. Food. Here is rice, milk, coffee, sugar, and more words. An abstract concept. Advice. No podemos contar un consejo, ¿verdad? O podemos contar todos los consejos que nos dan. Podemos eh, contar los momentos en los que nos han dado un consejo, pero incluso eso no es un nombre contable, sino que es una idea abstracta de cómo están pasando las cosas. Advice, happiness, no podemos contar la felicidad, ¿verdad? No tenemos un, um, una alcancía donde vayamos una felicidad, dos felicidad, tres felicidad, sino que es algo que se siente. Health, la salud, education, and more. A, a game, soccer. Podemos contar los objetos, podemos eh, contar las personas que se involucran en, en el fútbol, pero no el fútbol en sí. No podemos contar, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es el fútbol? ¿Cuánto es el fútbol? Tennis. Hockey, chess, and more words. A disease, una enfermedad. Polio, influenza, malaria, etc. A subject of a study. Una, una materia, ¿verdad? A subject of study, economics, psychics, astronomy, biology, and history. A language. Tampoco los idiomas, ¿verdad? Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, and English. And the last one, an activity. En este caso, cuando hablamos de estas actividades, vamos a agregarle la forma ING, o sea, el gerundio. And the ING form. And we have here swimming, dancing, reading, smoking, and drinking. 
So we have here the categories of words that we can use as uh, non-con nouns. In this case, we are just um, learning some uh, example of words that we can have on um, this kind of uh, categories, but also you can uh, find more words that uh, you can use in these categories. So um, I was telling you that I have uh, an activity for you. In this case, I think I'm going to share with you the one of the activities. I'm going to send to you the image because I'm going to uh, have us an image. Lo voy a sacar como una imagen y les voy a mandar la primera parte de la actividad. It's like um, a paragraph, a short paragraph, in which you are going to complete the sentences with there is and there are. Ustedes lo que pueden hacer es nada más leer la parte del de párrafo. Es un párrafo que está contando algo, ¿verdad? Están, están diciendo algo. Y hay espacios en blanco en los que ustedes tienen que decidir si va el there is o el there are, dependiendo de lo que estén explicando. So, you can just read the paragraph and you can decide what is the best option for this, um, for this paragraph. And then we can uh, say the answers for this one tomorrow. Uh, because uh, we don't have enough time to read this one and to give the answer because we have just uh, like three minutes. So I'm going to tell uh, I I'm going to send to you this uh, exercise. Then we have another um, exercise that I'm going to add to the document. Voy a um, a poner el otro ejercicio también en el documento que igual es para completar, pero en este caso es en negativo. So, in this case, you are going to use there isn't and there aren't. And you need to see the countable and uncountable nouns. And tomorrow we are going to have like a short, um, how can we call it? Um, it is not a discussion. Just we're going to talk. Vamos a hablar un poco el día de mañana. Vamos a tener como un momento para hablar. Así que you need to think about your neighborhood and you are going to describe the neighborhood in which you are living right now. Vamos a describir la, um, el vecindario, la colonia, eh, whatever. El lugar donde estemos viviendo, ¿verdad? No nuestra casa, sino los alrededores. Vamos a describirlo. ¿Qué hay, verdad? ¿Qué elementos, qué cosas encontramos en nuestro neighborhood y qué cosas no hay? Y eso va a ser como una parte de eh, an oral activity. Vamos a hacer como una parte oral de eso. Y luego vamos a tener una parte escrita donde ustedes van a crear unas oraciones. Yo les voy a dar palabras y ustedes las van a, a crear utilizando there is and there are. And that's it. Solo son esas actividades. Eran, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four. Four different activities. So I'm going to send to you the number one to the group of WhatsApp. The number two, I'm going to write a... The sentences on the document, then you are going to describe your neighborhood and we are going to um, talk about the topic uh, tomorrow and also to create uh, the statements. Así que vamos a tener dos partes, um, una parte en, en el grupo de WhatsApp, una parte en el documento. Mañana continuamos con las dos partes que nos faltan. Así que, uh, let me see. Yes. I think that is uh, the information that I have for the activities that we are going to perform in tomorrow. Así que les voy a, al terminar la sesión, voy a mandar primero el enlace del documento y dos, la actividad que vamos a realizar mañana. En este caso, ustedes lo único que tienen que hacer es leer el párrafo y decidir cuál es la opción que mejor le queda a la frase. There is, there are. Yo mañana les presento la misma imagen en el documento y vamos a ir viendo cuáles son las opciones, ¿verdad? And 
then I have the statements on the document and you also we are, um, you are going to tell me what is the best option. Igual, en el del, que va a estar en el documento, ustedes me van a ir diciendo cuál es la mejor opción. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the session number two of this second week. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night. teacher. Good night.